In this video, I'll show you how I created and printed 3D platform details for Union Station, planned my station building using Google Earth and Google Maps, and also you can watch me accidentally damage a turnout with a hole saw. Welcome back! There are a pair of turnouts under the bathers yard that are inaccessible, so I want to add some access hatches using a hole saw. The hatches would be hidden in the scenery, but would allow me emergency access if I ever needed it. Needless to say, I screwed up and managed to snap one of the PCB ties and foul up the end of the turnout. As a proof of concept, these portals work great. I was able to repair the turnout. Not exactly the way I wanted to do things, but uh, here we are. It's been six months since I started working on the Union Project and I've accomplished a lot in that time. However, despite all this progress, it's been months since I've had a chance to work on any scenery. You may know from my previous videos that one of my favorite aspects of this hobby is building structures and detailing them. With hours of wiring and other tasks still ahead of me, I decided to take a break from railroad infrastructure and start creating mock-ups of buildings to get a sense of my city's scale. I began with Union Station, and focused on creating steel lattice support beams that span the tracks and the platforms. I feel that these beams are an important detail, so I started there first. Using photographs and online references, I created a reasonable facsimile of the original beams in Adobe Illustrator and imported that vector artwork into a 3D program to create a CAD model. I broke the design into separate parts for assembly. I didn't spend much time perfecting it, as my goal is to get a sense of the overall look. After printing two sets of beams and installing them on opposite ends of the passenger platform, I was pretty satisfied with the design. Later on, I found out that rotating the design at a 45 degree angle on the build plate allowed me to print it as a single piece, so I no longer need to glue sections together. These beams were now the main reference used for determining the dimensions of the station building. When I was originally designing the layout, I knew I had to compress the size of Union Station considerably. My requirement was that each of the passenger platforms could hold five passenger cars and an engine. This worked out to be about 35 inches long, and this was the baseline I used for creating the scale mock-up of the station itself. To determine the dimensions of the original building, I used both Google Maps and Google Earth. In Google Maps, I measured the distance between the two ends of the passenger platform to get a rough estimate of the length, which was 360 meters or 1179 feet. Comparing this to the size of my model platform, which is approximately 40% of the original, I decided to make the station building approximately 40% smaller as well. Finding architectural drawings of Union Station was challenging, so I turned to Google Earth to estimate the heights of the station platform in the building itself. By placing your cursor at any point on the map, you can see the elevation displayed in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. 
The sidewalks surrounding the station were approximately 74 meters in elevation, while the wings of the station were 92 meters, and the center peak of the roof was 104 meters. Knowing this, I estimated that the station was roughly 85 feet tall. With these basic dimensions, I used Adobe Illustrator to draw a boxy scale representation of the station, adding windows as a reference for scale. I tile printed the building onto 8.5 by 11 sticker paper and attached those sheets to foam core. I trimmed the foam core to size, glued everything together with hot glue, and temporarily installed the stand-in station on the layout. There's no way I'm going to be able to build an exact replica of Union Station, so my goal is to create a reasonable representation of the original structure so that people who know the area recognize it as a station, and for those people whom this is completely new, they just recognize it as a cool building. With that, I also wanted to create a mock-up of the Aldershot Station. In this case, I decided to do a full-scale replica of the tiny station, once again using Google Maps and Google Earth. Seeing the station installed full-sized, I think I'm going to take some artistic liberties and reduce it. The real platforms in Aldershot are twice the length of my scale model, so I'd like to reduce the size of the station somewhat so it seems a little more proportionate. I dedicated some time to creating mock-ups of more landmarks, with a particular focus on the bridges that span across the tracks at the Bathurst Yard. One challenging feature is Spadina Avenue. It is a wide road with six lanes of traffic and two streetcar tracks. As one last touch, I decided to mock up a condominium that would exist beyond Bathurst Yard, as I wanted to understand just how big a 24-story condominium would look on the layout. So I have been working on mocking up some of the structures for the layout. Um, one of the key structures will be Union Station, and this is my mock-up version of Union Station. Um, I did a bit of math. The platform is 40% the length of the original, so I've tried to make the building 40% the length of the original as well. This is my first mock-up. I'm not happy with it. Yeah, it doesn't look right proportionally, but it gives me something to stand in, um, in front of the station so that I can see, in terms of scale, how it's going to work out. And right now, I'm not happy with it. I've also mocked up um, this would be Spadina Avenue, and it is a six-lane uh, roadway with a pair of streetcar tracks in it, and it is just like in the setup here, just down the street from the actual Union Station. I think it's also important to sort of mention the idea about selective compression. So these are little scale houses that I built several years ago. They're not big houses, but they're small. And you can see these buildings, these are from Outland Scale Models, and they look like decent sized apartment complexes. You know, they're about 12 stories tall, 10 or 12 stories tall. They're not to scale. So if you consider the size of all the buildings down there, this is the size of a 24 story apartment complex to scale. It is enormous. And when you consider how much room it takes, it makes the loop of track look ridiculous and it's the only building I'm going to be able to get on this section of the layout so I'm going to be rethinking the size of this. Adding a few simple buildings has transformed the look of the layout. It now looks more realistic and planned and it seems to be situated in a bustling city. Now I'm faced with the challenge of building structures of this size since I've only ever worked on mid-size to small buildings. This will be a new adventure for me and I need to plan how I'm going to do this. I may be purchasing a secret weapon to help me, but there'll be more on that later. I appreciate you stopping by, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you at the next video.